What's up, YouTube family? My name is Shaka Shabazz, and this is African American Made. Today, I'm chopping it up with Mr. Thomas Claiborne IV, the founder and visionary coach of the House of Clay. And the press saint, Mr. Claiborne, has invited me to South Phoenix to talk about the selfless work he's doing in the community, his insight on cultivating standing legacies, and what he's teaching men to help them achieve clarity in their lives. Our newfound brotherhood has planted the seeds of clarity within me as I navigate barriers and continue to build my legacy. So, roll up your sleeves, get ready to get your hands dirty, because today we're making a house of clay. I see that there's a um, increase in a lot of despair. Explain to me, or talk to me about, in your practice, how you um, recognize, do you, do you recognize and see those kind of pat, those patterns? in men right now? Or do you see your upside? Is it, is it the opposite? I think, so the question being, do I see disparity in men or do I see excitement? And I think it's really, it's a hybrid of both, um, really depending on what circle and spaces that we're in. There is a lot of optimism going on um, for this generation with um, all of the, the opportunities that are presented when it comes into capital and finances and resources and stuff like that, but then there also is a lot of deep despair um, where it just comes into not being able to make that leap or that, that large jump. So honestly, through my experience, it really has been a hybrid of both, depending okay. on what circles that I'm working in. Right. What I do think we're experiencing right now is it is a lot more isolated generation and then kind of wherever you're at, you can almost get stuck in there because of the way that things are curated, social media and stuff like that, it can continue to feed you wherever you're at. So if you're in despair and you want to hop on and continue to see how bad the police brutality is, you want to see how bad um, the economy is, and you want to do that, and you're stuck in that space and world, you can watch that on loop through Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and Twitter and Snap, um, all that stuff can be on loop and always bombarding you and you can really, a lot of people can get stuck and not see a way out of there. And then there's another space of people where, you know, they're living their best life and this is where they see opportunity and optimistic and they're kind of in this, um, this game of, of chasing, um, you know, chasing the bag and being able to produce the bag so they think they're the best life. Uh, again, for me, what I'm trying to get with out of visionary coaching is helping our generation to aim beyond success to significance. Because I do think there's a narrative that's being taught to all of us and kind of thing that still has us stuck um, on playing this game of, you know, a modern day game of, of monopoly where uh, we feel like accomplishing financial resources is, is the solution and we're kind of, if, if the bag is okay and our finances are, are okay, then that's what we've counted as success. But then it's like, how do we aim beyond that and be able to connect and reach all those who are in despair and how much poverty there is. And especially here when we think about the Phoenix metropolitan area and the increase in homelessness and the increase in, of the decrease in affordable housing and the, the ongoing, uh, pressures that people are feeling in the weight and responsibility, the, the quote unquote lack of job opportunities, but then also is a lack of imagination and vision to create new jobs. So I, I honestly see a lot of crossover in a lot of spaces and a lot of spaces where people are stuck. And I do, I do come in contact with a lot of people who are thriving and having a lot of ideas and being able to run across. So I know that was a long answer for it, but. No, that, that was very poignant. Um, there's a couple of points I wanted to touch on what you said there at all. Um, you mentioned the loop of watching messages, uh, images and messages or themes over and over again like on YouTube or, or social media spaces. Um, and while you were saying that, I was thinking, I'm one of those people who grew up with the technology, right? I grew up with it. I was a kid when email came out, nobody knew what the heck it was. Well, I was a young man when it, I was probably in my early 20s when people really started utilizing it, and then on from there. I kind of feel like I grew up with the technology, although I didn't utilize all of them, right? Like for example, I wasn't on Facebook when it first came out, but I was aware of it. I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. I knew how it worked. 
I just never had an account, right? Right. Um, and there might be some impediments there just for that, but, well, <laughs> but uh, it, may, it, may, it may have helped you a lot right. too. You know, so so um, television, just regular television and the images and, and things like that. And I, I parallel what you're talking about with old school TV, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the five o'clock, six o'clock news loop, whenever there was anything going on and, and, and that, you know, uh, mainstream media really cared about, whether it's print or, you know, television, the images and the, the, the messaging was the same. Now, I do know there is a, a, a slight of a difference because with the social media, you can channel into only what you want to channel into, right? Yes. So you can reinforce, right, yeah, right, whatever your thought process is. So you think you have more diversity, but you're really just reinforcing what, what your you own are. beliefs are, right? Yeah. That's what I've come across with a lot of people. Who are okay. How do you challenge the paradigm that you're in? Okay. And then how do you introduce new paradigms? Is gotcha. kind of where gotcha. a lot of people are stuck. And the other part was when you mentioned. People living their best life, getting the bag. I've seen, I've seen a lot. I watch yeah. a lot of content. <laughs> yeah. Research purposes. <laughs> <laughs> it's entertaining. Um, this whole ideal and this illusion, right? For the yeah. most part. And, uh, uh, granted, there are people out there that are really doing it or whatever. That's that's great. That's inspirational, and it makes you want to go out there and do your own thing. Um, however. My thought was that that kind of feed into the depression as well. Absolutely. All these people are doing so great out here. You know, this guy, he had $5 and he went and bought, you know, now he owns a whole city block and blah, 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 so on and so yeah, forth, right? I agree. Um, and a lot of it is not true, but you yeah. feed into it, right? Because yeah. your own personal desperation and trying to get out of that thing that you're in. Talk about that a little bit. No, I mean, I think that's exactly, again, that's why I was saying there's nature, nurture, and narrative. And I think we've been fed a lot of false narratives that do lead to depression and a lot of comparison. You know, we fall into the comparison traps of because we're fed this stuff all the time and people aren't showing their whole thing is, is a very curated message of their best. And I think that's what people are getting stuck in. You, there's a lot of mimicking and there's a lot of people copying and, and doing that stuff instead of living on their mission, on what their purpose and what their calling is from there. Because those things can produce income and they can produce um, resources in your pocket. And when you're in need of financial resources, a lot of people are pressured to do um, just what they can do to survive. And they're not necessarily thriving, but they're really in a space of, of surviving um, in this space. So if we would even reflect back on what I was sharing about environment and why my heart is so much to help serve and help coach up our African-American men because we are placed in an environment that may not be natural to who we are, whether if we're indigenous to this land or if we've been ported over here from Africa, everything here the environment and the culture uh, does not reflect what is best for our natural being in a, across here. It's, there's a lot of capitalism, and I would say toxic capitalism, that has an, invaded this space, which impacts a lot of our mental health. Um, again, issues that we deal with adverse childhood experiences. Um, so there's a lot of trauma that we're responding to, and, and that's kind of what I've experienced for all of our clientele. We've all experienced trauma, but then it's how do we respond to it. And there's a lot of addict addictions that lead to that, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs. Religion can be an addiction um, mm -hmm. where it's still, you're still not growing and thriving to be here, but it's just another way of coping um, with it. So I come across that a lot, where there's a lot of, of religious people but it's not necessarily in a, a healthy way of, with their spiritual growth and development, but it's just religion. Yeah. And I that's that just as bad a, as drugs and alcohol. I see that there's a lot of um, criticism about uh, the church now, particularly in uh, internet space. And I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect anyone, uh, but a lot of the things that we criticize online, there's a lot of harsh criticism toward the path that a lot of spiritual leaders are going. There's a lot of, from what I've 
seen a lot of division, um, particularly black men and black women, uh, when it comes to the church. You know, women being more tied to the church and men um, seemingly are leaving the church uh, yeah. for philosophical, economic, and um, uh, I would say family issues, right? Um, do you do you come across that being in the ministry yourself uh, and and a man of course you know you're a man and a professional yeah. um, have you seen any of that in your experience uh, absolutely I've seen a lot of again there's you got to learn how to chew the meat and spit out the bones right because um, yeah. you know there's good and bad in every space and environment again if, if people are in it then it's going to be corrupted in some way or space for it because that's just you know innate nature of, of who we are but through my experience there has been a lot of things that again even what you said too not trying to disrespect or hurt anyone but there has been a lot of things that the church has picked up through this colonization and imperialism of that has been reflected and impacted a lot of the what I would call you know the social structure of a lot of churches or ministries or from there where it is it has they do look more like local businesses or adapt more to what American culture is um, versus really with the mission of serving people you know no matter what religion or ministry if it's not helping to serve people to come into a space of liberation and freedom then it's still helping to serve towards bondage and i think there's a lot of crossover in that in a lot of the spaces that i've kind of gotten to there's a like a cap i think again when we think about the heritage the american heritage of slavery and colonization and imperialism again looking through a four-dimensional framework there's personal slavery that people just hold themselves up no matter what they've done it to themselves. Then there's actual the true history of physical slavery that's happened here on this ground and here. But then a lot of the places where we don't have conversations with, and this is what I do a lot of work with through visionary coaching, is the psychological and philosophical slavery. Do you get bondage. a lot of pushback um, from contemporary males, regardless of the age, black men, when you start talking about um, our slavery heritage. Um, I and the reason I ask that, I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah. the reason I ask that is because I'm noticing, particularly among the prosperity, uh, get the bag uh, mentalities, they really discount or don't want to talk about or don't want to acknowledge. They think it's a crutch to yeah. talk about or acknowledge our uh, slavery heritage um, and I take personal exception with that for some reason I'm a, I'm a student of history for one thing but um, I ask you that because I think that recognizing and knowing uh, where you come from well, it's totally in line with your whole mission helps us ground ourselves in where we want to go but some people disagree with that so in, in your in your experience do you get some pushback when you when you go down that lane, when you're talk, explaining just like you did to me about tying that cultural heritage into some of the behaviors and the, and the attitudes and um, even the visionary stuff, uh, where we want to go, do you, and, and you use that as a tool, do you get pushback? Yeah, so th what really helped, I do get a lot of pushback in the Dialogue and conversation, there's a lot of obstacles that kind of bring intention within these conversations. And I'll kind of be able to share in there. So for me, what really changed my perspective, I went, again, I went to Howard University my freshman year, first semester. I went to Africana Studies course. Yeah, you had, you had the, the kufi on, the black rib, black and green, you were awesome. But, <laughs> <laughs> not, first not day of class, you was all that far. <laughs> but but what I learned was just it's a quote by John Henry Clark. I learned from my professor at Howard, uh, Dr. Carr, which I'm actually funny wearing his shirt today. Um, uh, Dr. Carr just a people who start their history with slavery, anything from there looks like progress. And really, what happens if a lot of people they're not students of history. 
and they don't have a lot of understanding of heritage and history, and they're only starting their history with slavery and getting beyond there. So that's where I, so for me, it comes into a more dialogue and conversation because I think there's people who are fighting that um, when they're saying like, come on, we just can move on, and, you know, don't allow that to hold us down in Bonaire. But then it's also, there's this long heritage before this small little window of, of hiccup into our heritage. That's a one small portion of our heritage, but it's the magnifying glass on that has really enhanced, it's made it really, really large. Mm -hmm. And that's the part, again, with visionary coaching, like how do we get off of that paradigm into a different paradigm to have a better conversation? Uh, that seemed to be very challenging for um, those of us who recognize that our existence in America begins for most of us. Yeah. I'm not totally of that one school. I know we, we have um, a longer history here. Some people challenge that thought before um, slavery. Yeah. However, that is one of the primary vehicles for most of us being here, right? Yeah. Um, so I guess for a lot of us, there is no history before that. And that's where we're tapping into the imagination and vision. So if we could figure out where, where the trauma, where it inserted, and then we figure out what are all the ramifications that come with that trauma, and then that kind of helps us be able to work out through healing processing. A lot of people are more responsive to trauma, and mm -hmm. they don't even recognize that they're fighting trauma whether if it's just chasing money because that's their way to freedom or if it's chasing just education that's their way to freedom or if it's chasing get business or politics a lot of people are trying to fight the trauma and that's what they're stuck in, in so Florida. how do you how do you recognize that it's actually trauma and not you just trying to succeed like any other demographic like any other group of you know out there that's getting it and making it and that's where the, I th again, a lot of the work that comes in with the visionary coaching is, is having healthier dialogue and upgrading our vocabulary. Is really, that's really a lot of my main goals and a lot of spaces that I go into where it's like, it may not be that. It may exist, it may not, but yeah. because we have such limited vocabulary around it and we, get, we don't have healthy dialogue, and mm -hmm. it becomes fighting, whether if it's, you know, you should be Democrats or you should be a Republican, and then the fight becomes here. And again, now there's a, you're stuck in that conversation versus slowing down. Again, that's a paradigm. Starting a clean sheet of conversation and dialogue in a new paradigm, then maybe there's a third option that we can be able to walk through and have that conversation with. That's what a lot of my work goes into filtering and going through the history and the clarity and the dialogue around that because we really have a lot of unhealthy dialogue and conversations. Absolutely. And people don't know where that comes from, but if we could slow it down and we can explore that for ourselves, now that helps us be able to take that on to, to someone else and be even healthier part of the solution. And because we're talking about African-American men and think here, we don't really have a good relationship with therapists and we don't have a good relationship with going to therapy. That, that almost becomes a slight at your man card or that almost becomes something from there. So for me, that's a part that I'm working on navigating through. Like how do we have these conversations in such a way where it doesn't feel like you're just sitting down at a therapy session, but it's also helping you move towards the the vision and the mission and the values that you have already attributed to for yourself.